Hey there, my name is Corey Richards. Uh, I was a, I'm a former professional mountain climber and I photographed for National Geographic for about 15 years. Um, recently, I've, I've taken those experiences and I've turned towards writing. And that is something that I've been working on for the past three years. And it's resulted in a book, uh, which is a memoir called Color of Everything. Um, but it's really about mental health. As much as it's about climbing mountains and taking pictures, it's about my journey with mental health. And uh, I'm bipolar two, uh, which is a distinct diagnosis from bipolar one. But I wanna read a little bit about how that presented itself for me. And so this comes early on in the book when I'm about, I think I'm 13 years old. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit more about my journey with mental health afterwards. I'm shocked to feel tears as my brain begins to race, swirling in a whirlpool of thought that topples over itself. My mind is always fast, but this feels very different. The words and colors and sounds become a single encompassing hum until everything <clears throat> distills into a loud pulsing sensation. It's my own heart beating in sync with bright flashes of white behind my eyes. My head feels disconnected from my body and I'm somehow formless but trapped. I seem to float, but I'm tethered. The hum loudens to a roar until it swallows anything rational and concrete. I imagine myself being pulled apart by two freight trains speeding in opposite directions, torn between sanity and something else, something frightening. The noise in my head and the silence surrounding me warps, bends, and drones as my hands cover my ears and I pull up my hair. Like waking up, the horrifying reality of madness appears to me slowly and all at once. And I wish to die because all I want is for the noise to stop. For days, I tell no one and hope that hiding it will make it disappear. I've heard my madness, but I don't want to admit it. I'll learn later that this is my rite of passage into the world of bipolar disorder. It's my first mixed episode when hypomania and crushing depression overlap. I'm initiated. Madness lives in me. Madness is a strange word because it implies something, but I use it in this because I wanted to illustrate how it feels inside. And, and our brains are incredibly robust and yet simultaneously very fragile places. And the world and how we move through it influences us. And so much of what we understand as mental health is really just expressions of traumatic stress or trauma. And most of, of the mental health expressions, you know, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, ADHD, are really just expressions of some sort of complex post-traumatic stress. Now, that really means that if we're, if we're mindful in this, we can dig down into the things that happen in life. But the danger, and, and, and hopefully resolve them, but the danger in that is sometimes when we learn about our trauma, we get trapped in the story of our trauma and we actually recycle it over and over and over again. And what's fascinating about that is the trauma itself becomes a story that we then live by. You see what that, 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 what that does is it keeps us trapped in an old way of thinking and an old way of living. The beauty of understanding our trauma is it can provide a pathway that helps us move through it and ultimately get out of the story. And so much of this book is about storytelling. Storytelling is the central nugget of human consciousness. As soon as we can start telling stories, we do. And I'm not talking about the stories we tell around the campfire. Every person wakes up in the morning and tells ourselves a story about ourselves and the world we live in. And so much of those stories are built over years and years and years and years. But sometimes, sometimes they're no longer accurate. And sometimes they can be told in an entirely different way. In the same way that we tell the story, I am this, rather than I deal with or I navigate this. And that's the biggest thing that I've learned in my own mental health journey. 
is I used to say, I am bipolar. So I was identifying with the thing. And in doing so, I was keeping myself concretely chained to it. And now I say, my mind works in a very specific way. And it, and, and, it, and it does these very specific things at times. And, that's, and it's something that I navigate through my daily life. See, one is an absolution. One is, is concrete. One is a cage and the other is a journey. And that frees us from that concrete story. When we start looking at things differently, when we start telling a different story about our mental health, rather than I am depressed, a whole different story around that is, well, I'm feeling very depressed at the moment. I'm navigating a spell of depression. And when we can start to make this shift, we start to feel liberated from the identities and stories that we've created. Story is everything. And it's so important to be mindful of the stories we're telling ourselves, the stories we're telling others about ourselves, and the, story we're the stories we're telling ourselves about others. And mental health is no different. We don't need to be trapped in the story of sickness. For so long, I thought I was sick. I thought I was unwell because I told that story. But it was just a story. I'm not sick. Mental health isn't a sickness. It's like any other affliction that we have in the body. That's why I don't use the word mental illness. Because illness implies something somewhat negative about it. It's just something we deal with. And there's no reason that we should have a stigma around it. There's no reason that we should be afraid to talk about it. You know, there's a lovely quote in, the, in, in a book that I love that says, asking for help isn't giving up. It's refusing to give up. And I believe that so strongly in, 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 in regards to everything, but especially as it relates to mental health. And once we start asking for help, we're offered a different perspective and hopefully we're offered a perspective that helps us shift our stories around ourselves and the ideas that we might be broken because we're not, we can't be broken. We are unbreakable.